Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, was it paranormal or was it a stalker? But which one is worse? This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Hey, we want to hear your real ghost stories. You can call them in at 855-853-4802. You can write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. And you can also become a premium subscriber. You can go through Apple Podcasts. And with that premium subscription, you get advanced episodes. You get access to the archive. You get commercial-free versions of the show. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or at ghostpodcast.com. And that is truly something we have wondered before. Kathy Gordon's with me today. You know, sometimes what is worse? Is having a ghost worse than having a stalker? Is having a ghost Uh worse than having an intruder? Oh, I think think not. I think I would be really scared if an intruder came in. You've, You've been in the public kind of eye before. Have you had a stalker? Um, I have, yeah. I mean, yeah, heck, remember couple. way back when I lived with you in, Col- in Colby, Kansas, and mm-hmm. I was dating that guy, Larry the Poet, we called him, because he liked to write oh, poems. He was poet. a stalker, and I <laughs> yes, was just Larry working the at poet. the convenience store at the time. No, I have well, had a couple guys that I dated that kind of turned into stalkery behaviors, and then one time in radio... I was working at an event. We had a concert. We were doing the meet and greet. And and this guy came walking in the wrong door, and then he started yelling at me that I had stolen a billion dollars from him. Oh. And knew exactly who I was, which was really weird. And he was having some kind of manic episode where he mm. thought he had written all this music and my mm. station had stolen it from him. Oh. It was very terrifying, actually, because... He, at one point, they took him outside. One of the guys in the band was standing there, and he mouthed to me. He was like, do you know him? And I'm like, no. And mm-hmm. then he says, hey, Carol's really busy right now. Carol, can you come outside and talk to us when you're done? And I'm like, of course I can. So he got him outside. Oh. And then at one point, I looked out the window, because where we were was the second story, and the guy saw me and he was so mad. Like his face was all red. He was yelling so hard at me. And we called the cops, called the cops, called the cops. They never showed up. And so I just never knew, like, is he going to show up again? Yeah. I don't know. Is he going to be more mad the next time? Cause he was pretty mad that time, you know? Well, it, and it is, it's just unnerving. I've had a couple times in my life where I've had somebody stalking me and it's it's really scary. It was very, very frightening. You know, you just every time you leave the house, you're watching your back. Are they around my car? Are they yeah. in my car? Are they, you know, you just, it, it's very spooky. And it really kind of changes the way you live. Yeah. And how comfortable you are doing things and stuff. So I don't know, like, it would be hard to have a ghost I was living with. But I, I have actually coexisted with ghosts before in my life, and we've seemed to have managed. So I think maybe I'd rather have a ghost than a real live <laughs> weird serial killer stalker guy. But not or something. like a, a malevolent ghost. I don't want. Like, yeah, you know. You know uh, yeah. Now, like you know, it, it, uh, we could get into some really ugly ghost things, and I don't want that. Like so. a Casper, that'd be kind of adorable. Oh yeah, you know. But I've, yeah, I've lived with ghosts before, and we've managed somewhat. And so. I've lived with stalkers before. <laughs> I don't know. And apparently I've done that as well, yes. <laughs> Although, like, I have a, my house, I have a half acre. So the backyard's big. And I cannot go to bed at night without having my porch light on. Like, it's just mm-hmm. so dark back there. And I don't know. It's not like I'm sitting there watching for anybody walk up anyway. A light's not going to scare them off. But I just have this weird feeling. If I look out there and I can't see, there's somebody Mm -hmm. looking at me. So here is the story. So I don't know that it's a stalker, and I don't know that it's a ghost. It could be something in between. It could be a varmint. I don't know. (laughs) That sounded so Beverly Hillbillies, didn't it? (laughs) <laughs> it did sound a little redneck on your part. I, I never say. say varmint. I'm going to start varmint. saying that more often. So it says, hey, guys, 
I just discovered this show a few weeks ago and I'm hooked. I want to tell my stories because I grew up in a house built in 1994 that one other family lived in before us and I had weird things happen, but I figured it was so new that it was just not possible for it to be haunted. But now your show has me considering that it's possible. Either way, it's that or I have a strange stalker. So one night a few years ago, my older sister and I were talking about the weird things that would happen to us in the house. And during this, conversa- during this conversation, we figured out something so spooky. When I was in the eighth grade, she was in high school. My room was upstairs on the first floor in the front of the house. Hers was in the basement in the back of the house. We have a walkout basement, so the window in her room went to the back patio and mine went to the front yard. Both are covered by thick shades. Anyway, she told me how one night around 11 or midnight when she was in high school, I was in eighth grade, she was in her room on her computer listening to music when she heard a tapping on her window. My parents and I were upstairs in our beds and she didn't want to wake anyone up, but she turned her music down and listened. Okay, that's right out of a horror movie. I heard it, oh but I didn't gosh. want to wake anybody up. Wake up the whole damn house. It's okay. <laughs> That's right. Sam. The tapping happened on and off for a few minutes, then it stopped. She called the boy she was dating at the time to see if it was him. Because when either of us had friends over, we always had them come around to the back door. But it wasn't him, and she hadn't invited anyone over. She told my parents the next day, and they said it must have been an animal outside, but no one had told me because they didn't want me to freak out. So while she told me this, I realized that around that same time, maybe the same night, I had the same thing happen at my window. I was lying in bed with the TV on trying to doze off. The TV wasn't very loud. I just liked having a little background noise. At the time, I was grounded, but I didn't get my cell phone taken away. I was lying there, and I heard tapping on my window. It wasn't loud at all. I thought it might have been a friend in the neighborhood who knew I was grounded, so they tapped softly so my parents wouldn't wake up. But it still creeped me out, and I didn't get up to go look behind the shade. I waited to get a call from someone saying they were outside to come to visit for a bit, but I never got a call. I laid there and it went on for a few minutes in little spurts, then just stopped. After a while, 20 or 30 minutes, I got brave and decided to peek out, but of course no one was out there after that long. That week I asked some friends if they had come to my house that night, but no one knew what I was talking about and thought that it was even weirder that if a friend was going to knock on my windows that they wouldn't just call me and tell me they were there. And my sister and I did not hang out with the same people, so it's not like either of our friends would have knocked on both of our windows. After sharing window-tapping stories, neither of us have any idea what it might have been. I don't know. What do you think, Kathy? What I think is Mm -hmm. that there was some creepy guy that was tapping on their windows. Now, I don't know if these rooms were too high off the ground. I don't think they were because they seemed to think that it could be friends doing it. But I think it's some creepy guy. Because it doesn't feel paranormal to me. Doesn't to me either. But it does feel like the neighborhood pervert who's It like, does. It's exactly what it feels no, like No, when there's to me. two young girls that live there. Yeah. And it's that is an awful feeling. And I'm glad she didn't go to the window and look. I, I am too. You know, I, I remember this one time I was living down in Texas. And there was... I, you know, I was out one day doing yard work and I, there was a little bathroom window, you know, it was a first floor house. And I, I was walked over to pull weeds or whatever. And I looked down and there's these imprints of these shoes in front of my bathroom window. Like they'd been, somebody had been standing out there. And I think the other thing was there were cigarette butts. And I was like, that is so creepy. Somebody's looking in my bathroom window. Yeah. And I had blinds, but you know. It's just, it's so unnerving to think someone's looking in your yes. house. And just that yeah. tapping on the window. And, it, you know, with the, definitely the basement window, somebody could tap on that. And it didn't mm-hmm. sound like she lived upstairs. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't, I don't feel that part's paranormal. But maybe it yeah, gets paranormal. But no less scary. Yes, correct. 
So it goes on and says, then a few years later, my sister wasn't living at home anymore. And it was the summer after my freshman year of college. So I was back at home with my parents. I slept in my sister's room because it was dark and quiet and had a big bed. It always creeped me out a little. And there was a week where this strange noise kept me up at night. But we figured out it was a floor heater of my parents' bathroom directly above me. It said (laughs) P-H-E-W. But I still listened to music while falling asleep because I didn't like hearing those weird creaks. But one night around two or three in the morning, I was trying to fall asleep, listening to soft music on a low volume when I heard loud footsteps enter the utility room from the garage. We locked every door to the outside except for the door between the garage and the utility room because you need a code to open the big garage door. So these heavy footsteps go from the utility room into the kitchen to the top of the stairs. From the basement, you can hear every step a person takes upstairs if they are wearing shoes, especially on the steps leading to the basement. So I was laying there with my phone in my hand, ready to call 911, waiting for them to either go down the hall to my parents' room or to come down the stairs to me. Nothing else ever happened. I honestly considered that maybe they slipped off those big boots and tiptoed down the steps and would suddenly burst into the room, but instead they just vanished into thin air. I told my parents the next day and they didn't hear a thing. Even our two terriers didn't wake up, or if they did, they didn't react. But I know the noises this house makes, and those were the steps of a human being in heavy boots, like steel toe boots. It couldn't have been my parents' floor heater because, number one, it was the wrong side of the house, and number two, in caps, footsteps. (laughs) And I was not even close (laughs) to falling asleep yet. I was lying there with music and playing on my phone. I, yeah, that's such a distinct sound Mm -hmm. that you can't mistake that one. No, no, I agree. That one sounds paranormal to me. Yes. The last thing I'll tell you, I just don't even really get. I was sleeping in that room and I had this crazy dream. And at the end of the dream, I would wake up in the same room, grab my phone to check the time. The screen wouldn't turn on. I'd hear something moving in the room and realize I wasn't alone Then I'd bolt out of there and wake up again in the dream in the same room and check my phone. It would all happen over and over a few more times. Then I finally would really wake up. My phone screen turned on and I knew I was awake in real life. I laid there thinking about how scary it was and thinking about what was in the room in my dreams because it was always dark and I could never see it, but it was scary and would throw things and move around. Then I started to get that gross feeling again, like something was in the room, but in real life. I, lay, I, I, laid a few more, I laid there a few more seconds trying to tell myself that it's just in my head from having that dream. Then all of a sudden, I heard a voice. It was just a few seconds long, not a growl or anything, but it was a deep noise, kind of like a burp but not air coming out like a normal burp. It was a loud, deep voice burp. I heard that and ran the hell out, and ever since then, I avoid that room completely. And I've considered that maybe it was me still dreaming, but I remember waking up and being so glad I was awake and that my screen turned on, and just checking that, I definitely was 100% awake. My heart was pounding. I know I wasn't dreaming at all when I heard it. I have a few more weird stories like that. And for all I know, I could have just had a weird window tapping boot wearing voice burping stalker. (laughs) I genuinely have no idea what any of it really was. But thanks for listening. It's a great show, Mary. Wow. Um, I don't know. Because, you know, when you have those kind of sleep paralysis type of dreams, you know, I've had dreams where I thought, thought I was wide awake, but I couldn't have been wide awake. Because if I was wide awake, there was something terrifying going on. And then later I did wake up. Have you ever had those dreams where you're awake Mm -hmm. in your dream? Yeah. And then you have other dreams where you totally do wake up. But I've had the dreams where it's like, I, I swear too that I am awake. 
I just can't get my eyes open, but I'm wide awake. But in this dream, like, it was so awake that she checks her phone, her phone turned on. Oh, great. I'm not stuck in that freaking loop of a dream. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I, what I that think is. maybe, I, I want to say a combination. I think a couple of these things are paranormal. I think she definitely could have had somebody in the room. And while she was asleep, she was sensing them in the room. And that's why she was having that weird loopy dream. I think paranormal. I think the footsteps, all of the going up the stairs, paranormal. I still feel like the tappy window thing, though, might be creepy guy. Could be. But, you know, and it could be a house that doesn't have day-to-day activity. Maybe it's kind of just a ghost that, you know, goes house to house in the neighborhood. I and don't the know. parents never had anything? She doesn't say anything about that. And it really is just the tapping thing that the sisters seem to confirm. Yeah. But you might, I mean, it'd be worth asking. She mentioned it to the parents before about, because she was concerned about that. Was it the heater? Yeah. And the parents, oh, they figured out it was the heater that was bothering her. So she had mentioned to the parents at times that there were, you know, noises or something that bothered her. I, I, did she mention the footsteps and stuff to the parents? I don't remember in the story that no, she said she did. I don't think did. she said that she did. Well, I'm just she wondering said they if didn't there, wake anybody up. else had anything. Yeah. I think it'd be you worth know. having a conversation with your family to see if they can at least validate anything. Like, yeah. you know, the conversation with the sister. Mm-hmm. But that could have been creepy neighborhood guy or creepy neighborhood teenage guy and just trying to mess with them because they knew there are young girls who live there. Yeah. So I don't know. That's what that's kind of what but I But I definitely think the footsteps, that's for sure weird. Yeah. You know? Oh, I agree. I agree. Well here we've got another story. Here we go. Okay. Hi, I'm calling this tell a story. I have another one too, but I'll tell it a separate time. This particular story, I was at my friend's house and I was sitting in their living room and I could see into their kitchen. They were sitting across from me in the living room, so they couldn't see the exact spot I could see. So I'm sitting there and there's no windows open, no doors, no air conditioner on or fan. And there was a hand towel that was hanging over the back of the chair, you know, like next to the sink. And I'm looking at this hand towel and it's starting to lift up by itself. And like, I wasn't even really sure if my eyes weren't deceiving me. So I'm watching this and I'm looking around trying to see if there's some kind of way that there could be a draft in the meantime, I couldn't even get any words or sound out of my mouth because this towel is lifting up, scrunching together in a deliberate motion like someone was drying their hands on it. And so I'm like pointing and trying to get it out. And my friend jumps up because he thinks that somebody's coming through the back door or something. And, you know, I go, you know what I, you know, and then it comes back down. It was just the same motion as somebody had been doing the dishes, turned around, lifted up, you know, the part of the towel that's hanging down, dried their hands, and then it went back down. Exactly that motion, a deliberate motion. He goes, Oh, I thought someone was coming through the back door. And I said, No, I go, that towel just lifted up in a deliberate motion, scrunched together like someone dried their hands. And I literally, like, was starting to cry because the thought that a ghost could touch something solid kind of made me realize that they could, if they wanted to pick something up and throw it at you. But he said, Oh no, that's just my brother, David. He died a few months ago. And I took that from his apartment. Whenever he's around that dream catcher and he pointed to a big dream catcher that was hanging above his stairs will turn. And just as he said it, the dream catcher turned and two full circles and stopped. 
And that's my story. But I just thought that it was very strange that a towel lifted up in a deliberate motion. And that right there, I think, was the, you know, the the whole end all, the end all on any skepticism, <laughs> whatever, you know, like being skeptic of believing in ghosts. That ended that because seeing something move on its own accord, a solid object, really was shocking. Anyway, have a great day. Bye. That's like something out of The Exorcist or something. That's well, creepy. And, you know, we don't get a lot of stories about objects just, you know, doing something like lifting up, moving, you know, we, we get there's a lot of maybe objects have you come home and it's in a different place or something, but to actually see something do, you know, move like that. Yeah. And she's yeah. like, that was the end of my skepticism. Yeah. Period. End of story. <laughs> like it was over right at that moment. Cause what else could cause it? You know, even Not if a- you had like a serious wind gust in your house, like <laughs> I- that had, yeah, that needed to dry their hands on it. I, I mean, well, and th- then the guy's just like, oh, yeah, that's my brother. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, not a problem. That's my brother. You know, he died not too long ago or yeah. whatever. I, whoa, okay. Don't worry about it. You know, that's just, yeah. And yeah. I wonder if, like... And I don't like that. I always think you and I are just going to pass away on the exact same day, but which would be awesome. But but if that wasn't to happen, and could you be like, oh, that was just Carol? <laughs> no, I could not. I could not do be that. Like, Carol, cut this shit out. I'm dealing with enough. I don't like you being gone. Do you like, have to constantly do remind not. me? Yeah, do not do that to me. Okay. Do not haunt me. Okay, I promise. I won't. Okay, I won't haunt you either. Thank you. Because really, there's enough to worry about in the world. And then, you know, you'd be all depressed. It's like, oh, I'm really, really sad. And it's like, Jesus But there are some people that I would like to come back and haunt. (laughs) I would really like. In a not so friendly kind of way. (laughs) Not so friendly. Like, I would come back and pull a bunch of shit. I I think it'd be, I, I think I would get a real kick out of that. That's you and Tony. He wants to just come back and haunt everybody just to F with him. That's all he wants to do. I think it'd be kind of fun to do it to the people that have been kind of not nice. Watch yeah. me wipe my hands with this towel and yeah. throw it across the room in a I'm careless move fashion. Move your car keys in front of you. Yeah, and I'm going to move them, and you can't find them. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm going to do. Watch the car keys. I'm going to pick them up. Oh, whoops! Did I just drop them behind the refrigerator? Oh, in the toilet. <laughs> Wash. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's all kinds of fun. There's all kinds of fun you could have. Well, share those real ghost stories with us. Call in at 855-853-4802. Write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. Become a premium subscriber. You can get ad-free versions of the show with the advanced episodes and access to the archive. Go through Apple Podcasts. You can also sign up through patreon.com slash realghoststories or ghostpodcast.com. And for all of us here at Real Ghost Stories Online, thanks for listening.